This week on Carly's Couch, we talked to Alexia about her recent exploration at a silent retreat. Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> happy Monday. Hi, happy Monday. Welcome back, everybody. Or whatever day it is. We you're are doing great. Hope you're blessed. We are so happy to. She turned into a hotep, if y'all didn't notice. <laughs> that um, was crazy because I did. <laughs> Girl, she she texted me Grand Rising the other day and I just knew. <laughs> but um no but this has been a damn I should put my aunt on this has been a, a three month process <laughs> not hotep though I don't want y'all to get the wrong idea because I do not I do not she does not with the subscribe to that those right. ideals because they be walling um but she does in I fact I am all about peace and love and she does in name. fact say Grand Rising no I don't no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say nothing to nobody in the morning if you're a Damo mom I'll be like good morning. <laughs> But anyways, so um, in this episode, we're going to get into Alexia's silent retreat. But first, we will get into this week's question from the couch, which was... Choose one of your tattoos. What's the story behind it? You got a lot of good answers because I only got one. And then I didn't even put it on this because it was whack. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask you too. What is... Um, how many tattoos do you have? Uh, one, four, two, nine. three, four. Um, what is the story behind, um, the one that's like, there's a purple one. What mm -hmm. is it? Yep. It's agape. I'm about to say grape, <laughs> but no, it, it is agape. Yo. Okay. Yeah. It's agape. Yeah, what's what's um, the story behind that one? And it's purple and it's a flower. And so I like, I want to, I want everything that I do to be of love. Like mm -hmm. I want to just be an example of unconditional love. And for all y'all people, within reason, all of that to say, but, like, I really hope that my life and all the things that I'm doing are a testimony to love and, Aww. like, what it means to, like, love others and love yourself. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm like, why not get it tatted? I was laughing because um, I forgot who was clowning me. It was like, yo, how many other ways are you going to get words, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> tattooed on your body? <laughs> yeah, you get stuck sometimes. It's like, damn, that's really all I want to do. Um, and agape is, um, is like, fa familial love, isn't it? Um, or Greek, friendly. Greek or is for all. It's it's just unconditional love. That's the actual, the root meaning is unconditional okay. love. So not there, just familial. Well, I know there's different ones for different um, meanings of love. Because I know at uh, one of the old churches that we used to go to a long time ago, they had a program called the Agape Program. But I think mm -hmm. it had to do with like adopting or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it was like a, you know, a certain vibe of the, that type of love. But that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, what about you? What about me? Yeah, one of your texts. That, what's the meaning? Which one? I don't know. Uh, um, I have maybe. Let's talk about your phoenix. The phoenix? Oh, um, I got the, so I had a phoenix. Man, I don't know. remember when I got it originally. So I had, I got one and it was smaller on my side. And I think I kind of got it around, or I was thinking around like changing or like I could feel like a, a, a me was dead and different. Um, and I think maybe mostly around like communication and um, just, I don't know, ways that I, I acted that was just, I don't know, I got a little softened up a little bit more around that time. And so that was kind of thinking about um, like a new me has risen type vibe. And then over the years I had got, um, got it larger, I covered up the little one that I had and, and the guy started doing a larger one and then used that to cover up a couple different ones. Um, and then I never got it finished. It was like so much ink on it though. It was, that was maybe over 10 years ago that I got that. So also it's like, yeah, I'm just never going to finish there or do anything else with it. Cause it's like way too much ink there already. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, nice. That's cool. I didn't know. And I didn't know it was a cover up. Um, whenever she posted the picture for this question, I was like, oh damn, that was a cover up. Mm -hmm, Cause it was a smaller one. And then he like made it added to it. And then I used to have my very first tattoo I ever got was these, um, a staff, a treble staff of notes. And the notes were the initials of, like, um, this guy that, like, I was in love with when I was, like, 16. His name was Bargov. He was Indian. <laughs> and, so, and the notes were BDD, like, for his initials. And I was so pissed off because I had a dream about the about the tattoo. And then I, I woke up and drew it. I was like, ooh, I could draw, you know, music notes. A lot of mine are, are guys related, actually. I was like, ooh, I could do his music notes and have their initials. And I drew it. I took it to the place. And they were like, all right, bet. And they put it on me and did it. And I was like, no, I wanted you to like, like they took my exact crooked oh, ass no. drawing. So this shit was crooked as hell. I was pissed. Oh. And then it was in like the tramp stamp space. So it was like, it was just crooked as hell. I hated it because I'm like, bro, that was just my idea for you. You were supposed to stylize that hoe. Yeah. You were supposed to like make the line straight. It was bad. It was just all, <laughs> it was stupid. And I hated it. So that's why I definitely was like, I had to get that covered up because I hated that. Like that was my first experience. Though, and I just, 
I don't know. I didn't. Maybe I didn't know, but they really just was like, "Here you go." Aw, that's some host. That's some host stuff. <laughs> I'm glad. So I'm glad you got that covered up. And I did not know that a lot of your tats were men related. The Phoenix, pro- I just can't really remember all the way. But yeah, this one is. This one's a name. This is a name. This is somebody's handwriting. What else? There are a few others. Oh, okay. Everybody, look, if everybody on me some, <laughs> somehow. <laughs> All right, so um, one of the responses I got was, I have a mother-daughter tattoo with my mom. Mm-hmm. Same symbol, but the larger part represents her. The smaller, smaller part represents me. And it was her first tattoo, so I thought that was really special. Then I went back home and visited a few months later, uh, and she had already got another one. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I thought of one um, that could be a good one to get with somebody. I just don't know how where, where they would go, but like something where it's like you each have a wine glass, but when you put them together, mm-hmm. they clink. That's why I, I wanted to... Um, Oh, that would be cute. Yeah, I, I actually have a couple friends that that might be more uh, pertinent for them. Another one says, I have Let It Be and the notes to the chorus on my wrist. It was the first song I learned by myself on the piano, and my mom loved the Beatles. It was played at both of my parents' funerals as well. Oh, that's sweet. Aw. Um, someone said, I have a black and shaded lotus flower for a friend that passed. She loved that flower because it thrives in a dark place and is still beautiful. I love that I carry that every day for her. That's sweet. Lotus is what grows on the... um. Lily pad? I'm tripping. Mm-hmm. No, that's it. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah, that's like, uh, you know, no mud, no lotus. That's a big symbol for mm-hmm. transformation, growth, yoga, peace, all that. The next one says, one of my matching tattoos is with my husband and one of our daughters. It has our initials, we're all JB, written in rune <laughs> up the trunk of a palm tree. The J means harvest, ripe, harmony, and the B is for patience, peace, and new beginnings. We got in Hawaii. Oh, we got it in Hawaii at our favorite tattoo parlor, and the artist that did it sadly passed away unexpectedly less than a year after. Aw, lots of love and meaning for us with it. Aw. Um, another one said, I saw a tattoo fundraiser for a breast cancer research and mm. jokingly asked my mama if she wanted to get matching tattoos. She had gone through breast chemo f- or can- chemo for breast cancer a few years before that. Surprisingly, she did not have tattoos but said yes, so now we have matching breast cancer ribbons. That's cute. A lot of matching ones. Mm-hmm. The last one says, I was sad and my tattoo artist reached out to me and cleared his day so I could come down and be tattooed and hang out and talk about things. That's super cool. Yeah. So yeah, some people have like a good relationship with like their their tattoo person, and I've just always kind of been random. My <laughs> tattoo artist is dope. I love mm-hmm. him, and he said it. I was making did a joke. Uh, no, he only did the the side one and my wrist one, but um, he tatted all my friends' titties. I be joking mm-hmm. because he tatted like, right in between like this little place for like three or four of my friends. That's the guy who did mine. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got the titty stamp. <laughs> That's what I was laughing. What's his name? Poncho. Poncho, that's right. Poncho, the artist. Yo, y'all go follow him and artist my drug. He um, does such great work in South Central. You got me right at a party. Yo, he's he's awesome. Like one, two, three, (laughs) four. Mine are from like a party too. So from LA party, whatever. Yeah, (laughs) but I like that. Okay, so thank y'all for answering. Um, someone hit me and was like, yo, I really enjoy the questions from the couch every week. Mm-hmm. And so we enjoy all the really thoughtful answers and the intention and time y'all put in behind those. So appreciate you. Maybe one time we need to, um, what they're really supposed to be used for, the questions, is people to ask us questions. So maybe one day we can do an episode um, where we say ask us anything and then we can go through it. Mm, yeah, I like that. So that'll be Whatever upcoming. makes us not have to plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, but speaking of planning, so... Recently, Lexi went to a silent retreat, and so that is what we're here to talk about today. Um, what made you want to try this? I And explain well, what this well, is. Okay, so I signed up for a silent retreat. Um, a couple of things actually led up to me actually doing it. One was I'd visited, so the place that it was at was called, um, the. it's like the Shrine the lake of self-realization or something like that. Mm -hmm. I guess I should know the name. Sorry. Um, And it's up near like Pacific coast highway. So it's like very close to the beach up a a little more North from uh, in LA, but like up North. And while I was in the Bahamas over the holiday, excuse me, break, one of the books that I read, um, because I had went through my books that I had brought and then I grabbed something off the shelf. um, And in the book, it was really random. The guy in the book went to a silent retreat for like a couple of days um, and so it just kind of rejogged the memory of being like, oh, yeah, like I know when we're podcasting, we've talked about, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and also I had been to the lake maybe a few years ago just to go to the actual lake part, um, which is open to the public anytime. And I remember them saying like, oh, yeah, we also have like a free retreat up there. And I just remember like it clicked in my head like, oh, they had like a free silent retreat up there. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and so something, I guess, like just sparked it in my mind a few months ago. It's um, April now. Um, I was there during Easter weekend. And so it was like a few months before that that I signed up, probably when I came back from the Bahamas, actually. And I saw two. I was like, oh, okay, because it's, it's like, oh, you can make a donation. Um, there's suggested donations, like 150 a day. And, you know, it had all the information there. So I was like, oh, why not? Like, it's not, you know, anything crazy. So I just signed up for it. And that's why. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, that's like how it like, came to my mind. Um, and then I kind of asked, like, why yeah, I wanted like, to do it. Yeah, like, why did you want to try it? Well, because I just, I just didn't know. I, I, wanted it, I wanted it to have some kind of effect on me. Like, I wanted to feel like, well, I learned some big thing or, you know, there's some groundbreaking, something that would come out of being silent for a few days. Um, and I also wasn't sure. I was like, man, would it be hard for me or would it be, like, would I be chilling? So I kind of just had a lot of questions and I just wanted to see, how, like, what it would do. And I was hoping maybe it would continue to grow me in some kind of way. Yeah, it's kind of symbolic. It was Easter week- weekend, too, and we were yeah. just talking about a phoenix, so that's interesting. Because they had a lot of, um, well, so the thing I realized when I was there, I was like, oh, this is a religion. or not? A, I don't know if it's a religion, but it's like a, a spiritual-based mm-hmm. group that does run the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so they did have, um, and, and then I, what I realized is, I was like, hmm, maybe I should look into this more because I'm like, is this maybe part of, you know, a thing that they're supposed to do, like in their journey? Um, and it's called the self-realization fellowship. Um, and, and I should ask you if, um, the guy who's the leader of it or was, he's an Indian guy, but his last name's Yogananda. Mm-hmm. And so like he talks like, you know, autobiography of a yogi and all this yep. is, is stuff that he wrote. And so I kept seeing, you know, the name and I would see yoga and stuff in different places. And I was like, well, I wonder how closely, like, is this the same yoga, you know, as what is practice when you're doing the, you know, moving and posing and stuff and, like, what the connections were there. I wasn't really that sure, but. Yeah, I was about to say, if it's Yogi Nanda, then, yeah, that's, like, a lot of the basis um, for yoga. And it, it is practice, and he 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 does it. He's not the founder of yoga, uh-huh. but, like, his his trainings, they're all, like, in alignment, mm-hmm. like, all of the things. And we actually have to read that in yoga teacher training. Okay. That's what I wondered, like, um, if that's, like, where the name came from or anything or, or exactly how close it was because there were things that um, people did. So they, they – some of the things that they had – because they had a structure, but you didn't have to do it. Mm-hmm. Like, you could kind of do what you want. But they had, like, a chapel space where it's, like, that's where they would have meditation. So they would say, oh, group meditation at, you know, certain times. Um, a couple of those times, though, they played – they had a TV thing in there, and they would play, like um, – like a Zoom, like you could tell, like, you know, people all over might be tuning into this broadcast at the same time to meditate together or to do whatever. And they'd always have a few words or say something. But there was a couple things that they did. I was like, whoa. And everybody around me started doing it. I was like, oh, I guess y'all know what's going on. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> but they would talk about, like, um, something, the healing, something and something. And then everybody started doing this thing with their hands. And I was like, I don't know what y'all doing. But they were like this. Like, and then they did something else. And I was like, all right. <laughs> but I, it was kind of interesting. I was like. In my head, I was like, yeah, should I be scared? Because, like, I don't really know, like, what y'all doing exactly. But it didn't feel wrong or, like, you know. It, it wasn't like we were, like, stabbing a, a calf or anything and, like, making sacrifices. I'm glad that I would have come to get you very quickly. <laughs> yeah. So I was, you know, I was I had my head on a swivel a little bit still. But I was like, I was like, all right. But this is all, like, some love and peace type stuff. So I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, I was about saying, this is an energy thing. Yeah, like, it was. Yeah, it was this is an energy thing and then you can feel it. Energy is something, something, some, something. And everybody together was like, yeah. And I was like, all right. <laughs> so um, the first time I ever heard about a silent retreat was Vipassana. V- it's like mm-hmm. V-I-P-A-S-S-A-N-A. And um, it's a 10-day silent retreat. And um, Typhet, um, the artist who was recently on the podcast discussing bipolar disorder, she had went. And it's like 10 days. And that's what the is first that time. one through, though? Because somebody else asked me if I... If I did that. So that's like an official thing. That's too. an official. So, but it, it, it's not like through, there's not like an entity that is like the official, like we do silent retreats, but it's it is, it's a tenant. Yeah, it's the name that. of the practice, but it's actually a tenant in Buddhism. Mm-hmm. So that's what I looked up. Cause I was like, well, where's the origin of mm-hmm. silent retreats? And so it's a Buddhist meditation technique mm-hmm. known as Vipassana, which means seeing things as they really are. And Vipassana is based on self transformation through self observation. Mm-hmm. And so silent retreats were kind of born out of this concept of trying mm-hmm. to like get to yourself I'll tell you one thing, though. I was the most stressed out before going, and I was overthinking so crazy because 
I remember, like, all of a sudden, just like when, I, when I've when i gone on, like, a vacation for once, and it's like, all of a sudden, you be like, ugh, but I had all this stuff all of a sudden I got to do. Mm-hmm. And I was, like, doing the most, rushing around, and I was just, like, really stressed out. And I caught myself thinking, I'm like, all right, hmm. Like, I, I was just overthinking, thinking, and, like, I wonder what I'm going to get out of this, and is, what about this, or what about that? And I was like, Lex, like, you're already trying to think about, like, what's the lesson? And, and, <laughs> and, and the point is, like, you have to be present, so I really had to be like, all right, stop trying to be like, hmm, I think this or I think that or what about this? And like, just chill and just do it. Um, so I was like, that's so crazy because I felt like I was going into it like, oh, man, how am I going to be able to like get content if I can't don't really have my phone? And da, 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 da. I'm like, like, how am I going to show people what, what happened there? And actually, I do have hella pictures and videos and stuff. But um, dang, I forgot to do something with it. Um, but the place was so beautiful and there was times I went around and, and got stuff of the place too. So I could be able to like share or show people, um, the things that they had like on the walls and all over the place. Did, so did you set any official goals before you went? Like, I know you said you were trying like to think about what would happen, but did you, did you like set a goal for the week? So like that, weekend? that's what I stopped trying to do. Cause that's what I was thinking. Like maybe I should set a goal. Maybe I should have an intention. So blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, just go and just mm-hmm. be present and just do it. Um, so no, but that is, I was thinking so hard about all that at first. Um, so yeah. what was it like? Because in yoga, whenever they talk about, you know, it's like the, the they call it the mind monkey or like mental chatter. Mm-hmm. And like, that's really the purpose of yoga. So yoga is not for mm-hmm. your physical body. It's for your mental, it's like for your mental, like aspect to help you get past all the mental chatter and find that, that pocket of peace with mm-hmm. yourself, um, and to get past that. And so how, what was the experience like? Were you able to do that? Was that anything that happened? Mm. I think it was just so restful. Um, mm. You know, the the only thing that was, not that it was hard, but just wasn't intuitive, is like when people open, keeping the door open for you or something, like saying thank you. That was a, that was the only time that mm. I'd be like, oh, no, actually, so <laughs> funny story. So I checked in. You check in at um around 2. I checked in at 2 on Thursday, and then dinner was like at 530 um, so I went to the room. First of all, the room was fire. I had my own, like, my room was in the far corner, so I had my own bathroom. I had a balcony. I could see the water and all the stuff. Um, and I was like, well, shoot, let me sit down a little bit. And I ended up taking it out. And then I guess I, I just passed away. I don't know what was happening. I just, I was knocked out. And then I heard do-do-do on my door. And I was like, huh? I was like, oh, my bad. I'm coming. Like, I was just immediately oh, like, talking, ah. yeah. And then I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like, where am I? And she's like, oh, I just wanted to see if you were coming up to the dinner i was like oh yeah thanks because shit like i was about <laughs> to miss that jump and i was like dang i didn't mean to be sleep because they had said something earlier about like oh when there is dinner time they would hit a gong and they were like yeah you'll definitely hear it. you know if you're in the compound you will hear the gong so i was like bet i'm gonna lay down and i'm gonna hear the gong man she woke me up i didn't know where i was i didn't know what time it was i was just like oh my bad like and i was talking and i was like oh shoot lex like all right now i remember where i was mm-hmm. and from there i didn't have no issues with the, the talking part um, outside of being woke up like that, but like when people would clean your plates uh, in the room where we're eating and stuff like that, you want to, yeah, like it was just a lot of smiling because you're like, mm-hmm. thank you. Yeah, because like, you want to say thank you. Um, and then I remember the second day, the only thing I surprised myself because I, I had got all dressed and cleaned up and I was in the mirror and I was like, let's get ready to have an adventure. And I was like, oh, <laughs> and I was like, why did I even say that out loud? Like, that wasn't even, Talking to yourself. yeah, like, I was by myself anyway. But I was like, ready for adventure. And I was like, oh. <laughs> um, so that was it. And then I was like, judgy because there was this one other lady, Polish lady. I was like, she kept trying to whisper to people. And I was just like, mm. <laughs> but, um, But it wasn't hard. And I got so much rest because, like, what else was I going to do? I um, Between the meals, which it was so far actually having the meals be like 8 o'clock, 12, 30, 5, 30, 6, whatever it was. Um, and all their meals were fire. They were vegetarian meals, and they were mm. all really good. Um, I, I tried to remember a lot of them because I was like, damn, it's kind of – it was, like, thorough. It was They were good. And between eating, then it's like, okay, let me meditate for a little bit. Then maybe I'll sit on my balcony. It's like, well, let me take a nap. <laughs> then, like, well, let me go walk around the lake. So I would do a few miles around um, the lake, walking around there a zillion times. I saw Sinbad one day at the meditation lake and I was like damn I can't talk <laughs> <laughs> so they gave us these pins too because the lake part is public like and people come to it so we'll have to go sometimes you can yeah. actually see it um but the the lake part is public and so we had these little signs that said like SRF shrine retreat in silence but really they just made everybody think that I worked there because <laughs> like because because 
at least three people tried to talk to me. So I was like, bet. For after that, I took the thing off because I'm like, ain't nobody trying to talk to me if I don't have no damn tag on. So, <laughs> um, like, one guy was like, hey, excuse me. And, I, and I'm just, like, looking at him. And he's like, do you work here? And I was like, just pointing to my thing. And he was like, oh, I, you know, obviously, too, they're like, I don't know what you're talking about. But, like, he was like, oh, oh, oh my bad. And there's other black lady. <laughs> and and I felt bad I couldn't talk back to her because I was like, damn, I know she just wanted to chat it up. But she was like, she's like, girl, how many times you walk around here? And I was like, and she was like, huh? <laughs> and she's like, oh, 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 go ahead, go ahead. So I was like, damn, my bad. And then I saw Sinbad chilling out there, and, you know, he just had his um stroke. I'm pretty sure it's him. Like, there's a half a percent. It might not have been him, but I'm pretty sure it was him. Because I also saw some other black people kind of look at him like, hmm, is that somebody? But, like, he's just out there chilling. looking. Out. I couldn't even, like, say nothing. So I had to hit him with the respect. <laughs> like, a little, like, <laughs> peace be to you, not. Um, but it was kind of cool because even in, like, walking around this lake, and there's so many flowers and trees and all stones and all these things. And I was looking at things. I was looking for things. I saw uh, this cool snail or when everybody else was looking at other stuff and I'm seeing this or I'm looking at these turtles or, um, you know, paying really close attention to little things just because it's like that's my stimulation at that point. Um, but that's literally all I did was like and then go to bed by like 8, 39. Um, yeah, so I got so much sleep, maybe like 18 to 20 hours each day. <laughs> Never got old. I love that for you. Um, when people typically do the silent retreat, some of the goals or that, you know, they will go for or what they like, even on the websites, because I went to a couple of Vipassana websites to see like mm -hmm. what they're offering. And they said, you know, to quiet all the noise, to turn into yourself, allow you to rest, recharge, channel your attention inward, opportunity to slow down, mm -hmm. provides the opportunity to experience aspects of our inner landscape, which we usually keep hidden detox and then also recognize how we use words to connect or mm -hmm. to push people away or to determine our own worth mm -hmm. and um did you walk away with any of that like i know you said rest and recharge yeah it was actually kind of funny because i, I don't feel like i had any like aha like type moment about mm -hmm. anything and what's interesting about that too is like i don't know why was i even looking for that Mm -hmm. I guess, you know, because we always like opportunities to, like, hmm, get some insight. Mm -hmm. But I didn't. And I was like, dang, maybe I'm already amazing and perfect, like, before I even came out here. Um, and also I thought about maybe it's, like, just like with the nutritionist, like, once I'm starting to do it right, then I go see him. It's like, oh, I kind of feel chill and I'm going to this thing. But it wasn't a challenge, really, in that way. Um, I will say Vipassana is the one that's, like, 10 days, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, like, that might have been really wilder. Um, by the end of the third day, like, I also, I left, um, like, three, four hours early on the Sunday, but that's because I, like, I had to get a run in, and then it was, um, my friends were doing, like, a potluck for Easter and all that, so I, that was just a matter of, like, all right, y'all, I'm kind of done with y'all, because <laughs> they had, like, a special service and stuff, and I was like, I'm good on that. Um, so I did leave a little early, but I was ready. I was, I was ready to be like, all right, I want to go hang out with my friends and stuff. But it was funny because all that resting I did, all that no talking and all that, and literally the Monday after, I didn't do anything else because I was like, I needed, a, I felt like I still needed a weekend, which is weird. Um, and so I remember being like, dang, like, I don't feel like doing nothing on Monday. And maybe like kind of a calmness carried over because then also in one of my meetings with uh, one of my clients, she was like, oh, you sound mad relaxed. And I was like, yeah, I guess, <laughs> you know, you could say that, whatever. <laughs> anyway. So um, I think I was, I think I was chill. Mm -hmm. I think it did reset a little bit of like, no, 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 whatever that means. But you probably know what it means. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What can I say? Would you do another one? Yeah, I would do another one. Um. I think what I got mostly out of this too, uh, a couple questions I remember that I did write down was um. this uh, self-realization in Yogananda, they pull a lot from like original, original Christianity, like before a lot of things just got changed. Mm -hmm. They pull from original, original Christianity. They pull from uh, Bhagavad Gita's. They pull from um, some of the different religions mm -hmm. for the things that they're talking about, right? And then I was thinking, I, I don't know if this is their official thing, but, like, one of the things you keep seeing everywhere was these seven people. So it'd be like, I don't even know who this guy was. He looked like a fake Gandhi. It was like a, a Indian-looking guy, <laughs> Jesus, um, Krishna, you know, all the people. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know. All of them seem kind of Indianish. Minus Jesus was like the only white guy out there. And um, it made me think like, hmm, I'll remind her to self. And I think I wrote it somewhere on something. 
right there, African religions. I was like, reminder to self, um, I would like to look into like what are those like ancient or very, very traditional from the African continent mm-hmm. religions? Because I'm like, I wonder why certain ones didn't make the cut here or, you know. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing that I thought about from this is like, I want to explore that because they were really about like getting back to basically like, you know, some of the basics of that stuff, which is like love and peace and, and all that and, and recognizing your power and what you can realize in your in your life. And so it just made me curious about that. So that's something I would like to look more into. Um, and then also I wrote down get the water carafe in the cup because they had these fire, <laughs> they had these fire uh, water things in, in the room and the cup was like the top. But you take it, you had to go fill it up yourself. And I was like, damn, you one of those in my oh, office. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was just another thing I was like, yeah, I remember to write that down when I get back. Um, but yes, I would love to do it again. I think it'd be cool to do it with people you know. Yeah. I saw it, there was a couple couples and they kept being like, her. And I was wondering, like, how would that be if, like, you also committed to not talking to the person, too, if you're, like, in the same room and all mm-hmm. that? That could be interesting. Um, and I came away from it being a little more curious about their the Self-Realization Fellowship and Yogananda and all that. Because all the teachings and stuff were, they were pretty good. Um, and they made sense. And they, they were aligned with the types of things that we talk about as far as, you know, creating your life and, like, um, you know, being of service and all those types of things. Yeah, that sounds interesting and also a little different than Vipassana because the, you don't talk, they don't talk at all. Like, not even the people. There's not. Yeah, they threw like, me off when they did it. Like, yeah, they started talking a little. Like, that's, and yeah, they don't day, talk in Vipassana. Um, well, there's no, nobody's leading anything, though. It's just that, um, I guess, part of the programming was, like, like if they would have, hey, you can come up to the group thing and they would play it like a broadcast. So, so they're, like, talking to They don't have none you. of that. Yeah, and then um, there was one of the days they had one of the monks from the ashram, which was, like, connected kind of down there, too. He came in and was, like, um, while we were eating silently, he was talking about how, like, yes, when you're in the monk thing, um, what we do is we eat our meals silently, and then there's usually one brother who, like, you know, they say a few words from one of the books or something and blah, blah, blah. So he, like, did a little thing. He, he was got fire, though. Like, he's been in some – I was like, damn, he's been in some game a little <laughs> bit. Um, he was talking about, like, what's your most successful failures? I was like mm. – he yeah, he was spitting, but – um. Yeah, so, like, every when they did kind of talk, I'd be like, like, what am I supposed to say back? Or, like, what am I just here? Um, and there was a couple little um or things mm-hmm. they did. Um, and I was just like, all right, let's see what y'all talk about. But, um, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, I think that silent retreats, um, and you could go to a place. So, I know in L.A. we have an abundance of those, but maybe not everywhere in the country does. But I think it can be great for detox or any of those other benefits of, like, trying to really get past that mental chatter and all the stress of our everyday life and really in touch with yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're trying to dive head first, definitely look up some Vipassanas. Yeah. I um, I was actually kind of surprised. I didn't – I was impressed about, like, my phone very much. Um, but I – oh, I didn't charge it all weekend. It was like my phone was good mm-hmm. all weekend. I just turned it – like, some nights I turned it all the way off, and then I kept it on, looking at time. Or if I was going to the lake, I would take it so I could take pictures and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I was walking, like, so I could uh, connect, like, my Garmin with my phone, I would take it off of Bluetooth. So I had the Bluetooth on and off a little bit. Or not Bluetooth, like, airplane mode on and off. Because mostly because it was, like, notifications. Like, if I did take it off to connect or something, and there's, like, all these stupid notifications, and I was like, uh, I don't really want to look at that. But, um yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't too difficult. I was actually, there was one time I was like, dang, man, I left my phone in the room because I want to take some pictures of that late. And I was like, you still got two more days. Like, it's like, it's whatever. It's okay. Like, it shouldn't be that deep. But it was kind of weird. And, I, and that first night, too, when they woke me up all hard, I remember grabbing, that's the first night it is. That's the only night because I didn't, it's like I wasn't there yet. Yeah. Like, I immediately, I grabbed my phone, put it in my pocket, and I went to dinner and, like, put my phone on the table. And I was like, oh, yeah, like, <laughs> let me not act like I'm about to look at something. Yeah, and I was like, mm, let me put that up. I, I feel so, like that'd be the hardest part is like the picking up your phone because mm, but if you know you can't then that you probably would just not use it. But then for me, I'm like I talk to myself a lot mm-hmm. and I would not do that. And so mm. Yeah. Sometimes mm. but even you know what's crazy is you actually feel comfortable like sometimes actually just picking up my phone and it's like, what can I do on here? Mm, not really nothing. But you I still kinda feel good, like pick up a little bit sometimes. And I'll just kinda look and be like, I can't really do anything right now. So leave it. But it was it was interesting. Yeah. So cheers to more experiences that, you know, just trying new things and new adventures, but also anything to get your chi um, on fire, your energy aligned. If you have done a silent retreat, I would love to hear, like we would love to hear from you and maybe what that was like. Um, 
Yeah. yeah. And if you're in LA area, look into the look, you've been selling them up. They need a uh... self realization <laughs> fellowship. No, it was interesting. Um, I just, I didn't quite grasp like how deep was this like sect thing until like, I don't know when the, when that monk guy was talking to us too, he was like, he has one of the guys, he's like, um, Oh, and, it, and yeah, he threw me off. I was like, bro, I was pissed off because he, he was like, let's go around the room. And everybody say, like, where are you from? I was like, we're not, supposed to, be we're talking. not supposed to be talking. <laughs> that's what, yeah, that's what I'm like. It ain't all sound like, like no. Right. But that's the only that's the only time anybody, like, specifically talked to us. And I was like, does he not know the program? Like, <laughs> but but had it not been Who's for him, though. is this? Right. I was like, but if it had not been for him, I wouldn't have known, like, um. Like it was, I was like, oh, that's cool. Because there was, um, it's actually kind of more diverse than I would have thought. Like, one guy had come all the way from Rome. Mm. Um, he was an older guy, and he was like, "Oh, how long have you been on the path?" So that's when I was like, "Oh, wait, what are y'all talking about?" He's like, seven, 70 years or something." Oh. I was like, "Okay." And there was a couple, a couple from like Poland. There was another lady from Poland. There was one woman oh, wow. who was from Ecuador. Um, like, cause you could tell, like, she was she didn't really speak English like, um, super fully. So it was interesting. I, I was very surprised. There was a few different Indian, couple Indian couples, one Indian lady, another Indian guy. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but it was it was kind of mostly like white people. I was the only black person, but I was surprised there was really kind of, I didn't know, excuse me, what to expect. So it was interesting for that too. Yeah, that sounds cool. I definitely. It seemed like a couple of them, I was like, I was like, man, could I be friends with them? I don't know. Like we ain't talking, but it was like, hmm, I wonder if I could be friends with a couple of these people. But I could tell now which ones, um, you know, were LA based, but a lot of people had come here like from Chicago or this guy came from Rome or Ecuador. And I was like, it was kind of deep. That's why I was like, is this part of like the, something you have to do? I don't know. Yeah. For their path. But they have a few different ones. So. Um, in different places around the country. Yeah, so if you're interested, research um, that and hit us at Carly's Couch. Oh, was that the end of the episode? Mm-hmm. Oh, my bad. Have a great week. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Namaste. <laughs>